We're not alone. We love that expression. Sometimes people think it's about UFOs. Well, no, in this case, really want to talk about we're not alone when it comes to human microbiota, and that is uh, microorganisms that are bacteria, fungus, or parasites that live on or within our bodies. And right now, they outnumber our own cells 10 to 1. They estimate human microbiota or organisms account for 10 to 100 trillion symbiotic microbial cells. Symbiotic meaning, you know, a relationship that's good. And it, I gotta tell you, bacteria, good bacteria, certainly is why we're able to stay healthy, especially when it comes to our gut health, but in other areas too with our skin. There's so many areas where bacteria are really good bacteria, really beneficial. So when that balance is, is off, then that's where we get into the problem. So give an example. In the GI tract alone, there's 500 different species of bacteria in our gut. So they outnumber in that area our human cells 100 to 1. So you can see when it comes in imbalance in microbiota, when that gets out of balance, and we're going to have trouble in the GI tract, in the gut. People call it the gut or GI tract. So let's go through and talk about some point real quick that I have to bring up before we dive into this, and that is we're going to talk about antibiotics. And I want to start out with just putting this... Uh, this right up front. I believe antibiotics are about a huge boon to mankind. And actually, without antibiotics, I don't think a lot of us would be here because our parents and grandparents wouldn't be here. This is a fact. Antibiotics annually save 200,000 lives that are directly, you can look back and say, it was because of the antibiotic, that person's still alive. 200,000 lives are saved with antibiotics a year. It adds five to 10 years of life expectancy to the average US citizen. Antibiotics, amazing, miracles. They really have been. Survival rate from pneumonia in the 1930s, late 1930s was around 20%. You died 80% of the time of pneumonia. By 1964, because of uh, antibiotic therapy, 85% survival rate, huge. So I can go on and on talking about it, but I'll tell you what, antibiotic, as a pharmacist, we've been, uh, you know, obviously dispensing those for years. We have to tell you though, in all truth, as great as they are, it's a two-edged sword. And I think a lot of people are starting to realize that more and more, and some providers are too. Uh, but as pharmacists, we're asked all the time about side effects from antibiotics, and we usually counsel them on that. But I'm going to go through and talk about the top five side effects of antibiotics. And then we're going to talk about the most important part of this uh, video, and that is about how do you deal with the most troublesome side effect, which is the GI symptoms. And that's where the probiotics come in. So we're going to talk about that at the end of this video, because I believe for your health overall, this topic of taking care of your gut health or your GI tract is so important to your overall health. And we'll take another topic and go into that, because there's a lot of other factors are finding that gut health, a good gut health, is going to be uh, conducive to other healthy things about, you know, preventing or mitigating some disease states. Kind of amazing stuff. But right now we're, we're talking about using uh, probiotics to counter side effects. So five top side effects of antibiotics. One, digestive issues. You got nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Been there, done that. So we'll talk about that because I've had some experiences with antibiotics. Allergic reactions, anything from a mild rash to a severe anaphylaxis. Bugle infections, it could be oral candidiasis, or it could be thrush, or it could be vaginal yeast infection. Photosensitivity reactions, where you take an antibiotic and now become super sensitive to the sun, you get uh, rashes and sunburns, sometimes severe. And the last thing is uh, blood reactions, where you can actually have some changes in your blood work, the leukopedia, thrombocytopedia, all kinds of things. Kind of rare, but it happens. I want to talk about two of those side effects, and, and that is uh, the allergic reactions and the digestive issues. From a personal standpoint, I want to talk about these, and that is a professional. And uh, my two stories that of uh, experience that I had on my back is I had a severe type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. Uh, it was a Steven Johnson on the spectrum from 1 to 10. I was probably a, a 3 because of my age. I was 40. Where I had a severe reaction to the drug. Where I had peeling of the hands and feet. My, my hands were all like really, they started to peel. It was awful. And my mucous membranes were really inflamed. And I had some of the most severe muscle aches and lethargy. Almost like severe flu times 2 where I couldn't even get off the couch. And the, the, the rash was so heavy that I was like a red man. I mean, I was just totally covered. So that was a very severe reaction to a drug that I used IV for a septic knee. It was for MRSA, <laughs> which is another point about antibiotic resistance. This was a resistant bug, a nasty little super bug that somehow got in. That's my story of how an antibiotic had a side effect that was pretty severe. But I'm gonna tell you, if I had to do it again, I probably would have because that septic knee was on its way to becoming sepsis, widespread sepsis in my body, and I would have been going to meet my maker in my 40s. I said, now I'm 64, I'm still going strong. So the second story is about me taking a macro that antibiotics or upper respiratory infection. I'm gonna call them bothersome, not severe, bothersome symptoms that were 
really interfered with my lifestyle. Really excessive diarrhea, bloating, stomach cramps. It was affecting me actually at my job, doing my job. So that happened to me a couple times. So that's when I started to really understand. I really need to dial a little bit more about probiotics, pro maybe before antibiotic therapy, during antibiotic therapy. I might want to think about dialing that in. So we'll talk about that when we get to the end. But the next thing about it is antibiotics are having a lot of issues now with non-compliance and that's creating some big problems. And you want to avoid this and you can because I'll tell you about some of the data, but right now about 31% of the people do not finish the course of antibiotics. In other words, they're non-compliant. They they're not they're not adhering to the therapy. They're discontinuing the therapy. And what's that leading to? It's gonna lead to prolonged illness and sometimes the reoccurrence of the illness and sometimes the illness comes back with vengeance, right? They might have helped create a few resistant bugs there. So it's very important not to skip your therapy to skip doses, but also it's important not to stop the therapy early. So Non-compliance is an issue. And again, I've seen other studies that show that 77% of the time, this one probiotic company showed that if people stayed on their probiotics and didn't have the GI side effects, they finished their course. So about the same numbers, right? Uh, kind of interesting to know that uh, that can happen because people stop because they say this is unpleasant. So now here's the next thing about antibiotic non-compliance or not sticking with it. Antibiotic resistance is a huge growing threat. And right now they find that uh, there's some global impact from this to a point where and it's responsible worldwide for the deaths of 1.2 uh, million people. And it contributes uh, annually to the deaths of 4.95 million people, which means they get, you know, uh, antibiotic resistance, they get, you know, a super bug, but something else kills them along the way. So, but think about that number though, uh, 4.95 million deaths because of antibiotic resistance. So it's a huge thing. Here's some of the danger though. The danger is because 30% of the time antibiotics are prescribed when they're really not needed. And, and that's been a big issue. And in some of the elderly patients with the respiratory infections, they find that 50% of the time that antibiotic prescribed is not going to do anything because the person does not have a bacterial infection. The antibiotics do not work against viruses. They only work against bacteria. So if somebody's being treated with a, like an antibiotic for a bacteria and they have a viral lung infection, viral pneumonia, it's not going to work. Now, why do they do it? They want to make sure they don't get a secondary infection. I get that, but the, they're starting to change their view on that because there's been so many problems. What about the economic burden? This is huge. Antibiotic resistance. If an estimated that by 2050, there'll be $1 trillion spent on therapies to take care of antibiotic resistance. One trillion dollars in healthcare dollars. Because people get hospitalized, people go to the emergency rooms, bad things happen. And they think that this is gonna be a huge, huge issue. So we're working on it. I mean, different antibiotics coming out, I understand that, but I think part of the problem is, is the non-adherence, the non-compliance of taking your whole course. So let's go through and talk about, what do you do about the side effects of allergic reactions? I wish I could do what? I didn't know I was allergic to this drug when I had it for the MRSA, the IV drug. I didn't have any idea. But I could do something about the other experience of adding antibiotics, and that is some of the GI symptoms. And what I did with that is, uh, what I'm gonna talk about right now is using probiotics. And here's some of the people out there fighting that have had trouble with antibiotics. They're starting to use them before antibiotic therapy, during the antibiotic therapy, a little bit afterwards. And some of them proactively are taking them on a regular basis. And the safety profile of these drugs is very good. That's what I call them drugs, are actually live bacteria, sorry, pharmacists and me. They're actually live bacteria. The safety profiles are, are very good. So, I mean, they don't have studies on, I mean, absolutely huge long-term use of the drug, of the bacteria, I'm sorry, the probiotics long-term, they don't have that. But overall, the safety is very good. So let's talk about when to use uh, probiotics and, and how you should go about it. I think what you'll be looking at with this, why probiotics? Why are they really going to be the thing that can help prevent these symptoms? Well, it's simple. Probiotics, if you use them uh, during antibiotic therapy, they're going to do a couple of things. They're going to significantly reduce the risk of uh, antibiotic-associated diarrhea. That's a common side effect. It's a very troublesome one. It's one that really drove me crazy. Studies have shown they might reduce this risk by up to 50% if you start the antibiotics and you also start the probiotic at the same time. 50%, that's it. It mitigates or it minimizes other GI effects like the bloating gas and abdominal discomfort. I can tell you, my experience with that is that also is disturbing. Uh, as bad as the diarrhea can be, that is also disturbing. But it also restores gut microbiome balance much faster than you're gonna do it on your own with whole vegetables, fruits, and everything else. And some of the dietary things that have fermented products so you can reseed takes a while to do that and I tell you what you just don't have an appetite for some of that stuff when you're going through this especially you know a lot of fiber type products or a lot of fruits and vegetables it restores it much faster which is key it might reduce antibiotic resistance because people are compliant to their medications and actually kills the bugs uh, or helps the body kill the bugs instead of leaving them there to say oh, I think we're gonna mutate gravitate over here and maybe mutate a little bit it improves the overall treatment outcomes 
because people are finishing their therapy. So important. And it, and also it might help reduce the chances of some vaginal symptoms. There's a high percentage of females that, that report vaginal side effects, especially from yeast infections. And anywhere from I've seen numbers of 25% up to 50%. So probiotics. Are they important? Absolutely. And uh, I think that a lot of people, uh, when they start an antibiotic therapy, they really should think about starting a probiotic. And in the next video clip or section of this, I may talk about, hey, Joe, who do you choose as a pharmacist? What's your go-to? What are the ones that you recommend to your patients? And I'll tell you that in the next clip. So until next video podcast from RX Healthy Habits, stay strong, stay healthy, and really think about dialing in your gut health, your gut health with a great probiotic. Thank you.